Okay. Uh, let's do some demonstration in basic Scala syntax and the way we uh, use some of these Scala variables and uh, values. So with that demonstration, you might understand how to read input outputs, inputs and print outputs, and then kind of how to handle strings uh, and the difference between value and variable and so on. All right, I will start my uh, uh, Docker container. With that, I start the style. Right. Uh, so first of all, remember I ask, give I ask uh, to write a function for volume. Yeah, calculate the volume of uh, sphere. Right. So for that, we need to get the high value, mathematical high value. So Scala has some inbuilt functions. So if you want to see the members of that, so you can put this function name and then then put and then tab tab on your keyboard. So it shows the members of that. So in the Scala has some function called map. It has a library called map and it has some functions. So for example, if you type map dot I, it returns the high value. So when you type max dot maybe cos, your is one, right? Maybe if you want to kind of get a scar root, so it says Q, you can type tab, press to complete, and then maybe I type scar root of 36, the six. Right. So similarly, if you want to get the power, so we have function yeah, power to be three to the power of four eighty one. So like that. So basic mathematical functions are available in the math library. So you want to see those you do functions you type man dot and press the tab on your terminal key so you may see the functions available so let's say we want to write uh, functions to get the volume so we can type there volume volume then we put the radius r as a double and return values uh, four or three five 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 three times r So then we can call volume right here. It's return the answer. So like that, you can basically uh, calculate or call some functions and then write new functions. Okay. So in Scala, there are two types of uh, two data types, what you call as variables and values. Values are kind of constant. So let's say we define the value x equal four, and then value y equals six. So we can say x plus y. So then obviously ten. So the value we cannot reassign. So for example, you say f equal now uh, five. 
it's a reassignment to the value. It's not possible. If you want to in the Scala prompt, if you want to give pi to x, you have to pre-declare it like that. You cannot assign like that. So if you want to assign that different uh, values to this, so we have to define it as variable. Sigma pi or something like that. So then we can assign maybe seven to it. So that's the difference between variable and value. So we discuss uh, math class and then variables and values. So after that, so I would like to uh, show you how to kind of write uh, uh, compare two different things. You know now we have x and y. So let's say we want to write a uh, take the uh, value on max. We want to assign the greater value among x and y to max, the new value called max. So how do you do that? So we can write an expression like that. If we, we say if x greater than y, then max is x, as max is y. So you see, it's automatically x is greater, so max take the same. So we can write such uh, expressions in Scala. Similarly, Scala suppose, uh, uh, so this kind of expressions actually call it as uh, Boolean expressions. So if x greater than y is a Boolean expression, using if keyword, we use this Boolean expression. So we can write a Boolean expressions in uh, a different Boolean expression. So it, it's color has several types greater than, greater than, no equal, less than, less than, no equal, or equal. Equality is test by two equal signs like that. So it's false because x not equal to y. Uh, so a scala has set of uh, other what we call logical operators where we can combine more than uh, one boolean operators or boolean expressions together uh, uh, x and y uh, i will redefine them uh, i redefine maybe value x uh, to y maybe value uh, y to y uh, to 8. As you see, I'm not giving the type here, but by looking at the value, scala automatically decides as it is. So if I do like 8.3, scala take y as double. Right, okay. So now I have uh, two variables, x is 5, y is 8.3. So using that, I can make Boolean expressions. So for example, if I say x greater than, less than y, this is true because value of x is less than y. So if I want to connect two uh, Boolean expressions together, I can connect with and O. So when I say and, it's two emphasized signs. So I say x less than y and x equal y. Answer is false. Why? This part is false. If I say x greater than y and x 
less than 10. Then earth is true because both parts is true with the end condition. So if you use O condition, so you can get the previously type things with arrow keys. So I get the this one, I combine it with the O condition now. You see it become true. Why? Because this part is true. One of these two, if you combine it not, if one part is true, then it becomes true. Similarly, we can take opposite of entire Boolean expression by putting kind of not condition here. So you see true then become false. So similarly, when in one condition we can put that, let's say I create a value for is it, it is not x less than y. It is equal to x greater than y, obviously. Sorry. Uh, Uh, x plus then y here. Y is written. Oh, x and y is not defined. Now I have to define them back because I exit from that. I define uh, x is equal to 3. I define y equal then x less than y becomes true so i can assign that to the variable if you wish i think value let's say value b equal x less than y yes you see so then type of b is a boolean you see there is a type called boolean in this part. So type B is boolean. So it's designed true to the B. So similarly, if you want to get opposite of that, I think we can put not here. Let's see. Let's take in here. Why should? Maybe it expected semicolon. No. All right. Uh, we cannot put not here anyway. So, but this works. But if I do like this, let's say, and uh, fly just there, wait. It works. It is Boolean. When you take. Not here. I don't take not here. Why? You put not. It may go to the next line. It says it's not complete. Mm -hmm. uh, right. uh, I will check and let you know why it's happened. But anyway, so if you do this, it automatically take it as boolean. Right. So those operators, this one and, and similarly, uh, we can use this for O. This for O. So if O becomes false, if both become false. So if I change this to this, as you see, both part false. So then final output is false. B as the false. Right. Uh, so that's Boolean expressions works. In the Scala has instead of print, you would call print similar to C programming. How the printf works, after printf we have to view the format as string. There we should tell the type. So for example, if you want to print the integer we say d and then x is the integer value so I print the three so if you want to kind of like put some space 
then print that will be file space. So uh, we say like that here after after we follow. We say it's a file. Put the five characters and then put the value D. Similarly, we can type anything here, like x equal so whatever we type will get repeated and then this place will replace by the value of the wave so if i want to put the y value as well here so we can say y equal and slash d and then here we need to put y so x will replace here then y will replace here like that so it's called as printf function formatted printf similarly if you want to print strings that printf supports that so scala we can have string as well i create a value maybe called s1 string is awesome. let's create a string custom so if I want to print that string on the terminal, I say printf and then need to do s and then s1 as the variable name to print cursor. So if I want to say hello cursor, maybe I say hello and then s and then the variable name. I can combine this with the number as well. So then I can say maybe x equal. So I put a D here. Then we put a variable, some variable here. So S1 replace string here, Y replace here. So you see, you know, as an X5 will print it as a result. Similarly, if you want to print uh, uh, decimal numbers, so like let's define value X as now 3.4567 so it's a double so I can print it and say f and then x print entire numbers 457 with several decimal places let's say I want to print it with two decimal places then I put that two here and f then it is printed only two decimal places like that i can have formatted outputs using print so scala has simple uh, input command as well if you want to read something from the prompt so we can use uh, a command called standard input output scala standard input output so let's say i want to read the string so i type s then scala dot io then std input standard input and then say read line sorry i misspelled read line so it's reading a line, it's waits for me to type a line. I say CLC. So it's read it and S1 now contains the line it reads. Similarly, if you if you wish we can print a prompt. So saying maybe and name like that. And then uh, read. It. So you see, whatever I put it there, prompted here. Yeah, so then I type my name. So it's read it for S1. Now S1 is so right. So in the standard IO library, consists of not only strings can. Uh, several methods a system of several methods if you want to see those methods after standard in and dot press tab 
shows all the read methods available in this kind of input. So you see there is a method called read it. Read it will read the integer to the S1 variable. Now S1 is not a string, it is an integer. So you see, it is the integer value. But if we want to put print a prompt, like here, we don't work because there are no function in take the option here. So maybe uh, we can write it. If you want to have a new function to prompt and read, we can implement a new function like that. Maybe I say read int prompt new function which take s string as input and yeah I say here first I say print it and inside that I print whatever the input parameter is right after that, I use this. Copy it and paste it here. Now, from because read in is it down from and then cross scale back. So it's a new function. Now so you see it didn't work with the prompt, but read in P will work. Sorry, for that we don't need this scala u because in this scala u there are no such functions. So read in p we implement it. So we type s1 read in p. So then it prompt it. You see, you want to put a space there, you can do that anyway. So I type then 76. So now my s is this one is 76. So you can hold. If you wish. Similarly, as you may see, if I'm coding this, this function here, I use more than one expression. So this is the first expression, and this is the second expression. So it's called as expression block. If you define a function, if you have expression block like that, return value is the last expression. So you may notice that with this function. So maybe we, I write a different function. Function, maybe f1. Uh, take two values in send y. Like that. And then uh, instead of single function, I return value. I put expression of i will be x multiplied by y and then say x plus y. Two expressions in that. Right? So let's call now f1, 2 and 3. We got the answer 5 because this is this one, last one has taken as the return value. That's why you go twice. So, but if you do this, Maybe we can say like that if you wish. Z equal x multiply five, and we say x plus y plus z. Right. So when I then secure that, answer is zero because x multiply y is two multiply three that is six. Then 6 plus 3 is 9 plus 2 is 11. So we got the return value 11. So as you may see, the return value is the last expression of the function. All right. Mm -hmm. So in case when you uh, 
in the strings, especially the strings. So let me define the string for uh, uh, S2 is in one. So then there is a string called S2 in one. So we can say S2 here. Uh, and then I define the uh, value uh, S1 as cousin. So my S1 is cousin, S2 is yeah. scala and can concatenate two strings like that. S1 one S1 plus S1 is cousin, S1 plus S2 is cousin mirror like that so maybe scala can multiply the strings very strange interesting like that s1 multiple four what do we expect there so let's see the strings the s1 string four times uh, similarly string function has uh, different other functions so if you want to see the sub functions in the string, so you say s1 dot tab. So you see there are plenty of string functions. So these are the operators functions which can use on top of the string. So among maybe I use s1 to upper case like that. So it returns all letters from the upper case. So maybe I can use like a string can contains function contains uh, right contains and then say a you see it's written true because cousin contains a so maybe I say is it false because there are no letter is it there. But on the other, maybe I can say K is yes, string contains uh, um, is this K is is when you take one letter, it returns uh, K is is actually not a container because K is capital in this one. This one, if you see that. It's case capital, so that's why it's used. Because maybe I use capital, it's straight and true, right? So we can partially compare the string using contains. Similarly, it has S1 length, like that. Length of this particular S1 string is fine. So there are plenty of the string functions. You put S1 dot and see all of them. And then you can explore yourself those string functions. All right. So these are the basic things what I would like to demonstrate. Uh, so you can use this Scala prompt and do various things and just play with those operators, uh, variables, values strings and then get familiar with the scala so it's very useful to familiar with the scala before we move on with functional program thank you very much